All right, guys, it's day two. So yesterday, uh, made some progress. Didn't really get where I'd like to go. I got crap in my hair here. Didn't really get everywhere I'd like to have gone. I, I attempted some stuff, trial and error here. Um, I found some, what I think are kind of helpful comp threads from like 2009 on the internet. So people not really responding. It's been a long time, um, but it's a, it's a start. I think my problem is kind of unique and I'm hopeful that I can get it fixed. I am attempting something new. I was, I was able to have a little bit of success. I, I'll show you what I'm working with here. So yesterday I discovered that the, uh, the drive shaft, and I'm just continuing to call it the drive shaft because that's just what I'm calling it. Um, it had uh, completely snapped in half. That's not quite what it looked like. It had snapped in half. Uh, so I got this piece of conduit, probably not the best option, but it was strong. So I went with it, drilled some holes in it, uh, connected it here and in the other tube on the other side. Um, the problem is there was so much torque. It was working. It did lift the back end, but there was so much torque on it that it literally snapped off uh, this bolt here, snapped it in half. Uh, that's kind of scary. But it, uh, so then I tried... A little bit of a stronger bolt and uh it went up a little bit and then sure enough it kind of quit and got actually stuck halfway um it had literally snapped off uh a tip of this solid i'm guessing that's steel um it had it had been working its way as you can see um the bolt had moved around so much and shifted it was just a matter of time before it snapped and then this thing just completely came off and not ideal, um, hopefully it didn't bend this. It's attached to a sprocket here. Um, and you can see when you go to the other side, when you crank it, this thing was spinning, but nothing was moving inside. And that's how I realized that it snapped again. So it snapped off. So I was like, well, there's a reason that it is. Uh, and you can see here's a, the piece of the end of that uh, tubing that had just, it had just, it was gnarly, it snapped in half. Um, but I figured there was, there was a reason that there was too much tension or something was causing the back end not to lift very easily when it should just go right up like the front end does um so i chased it back and uh there were no other brakes which was good um i chased that pipe all the way back to the back end here um all the way through these cabinets i'm trying to do this without taking the cabinets out although it looks like there's some base pieces that are a little rotted so i may end up having to um but i chased it all the way back here uh, sure enough, there were no brakes. So I was like, well, uh, the chain's on still. This system is kind of a mystery. And from the sounds of it, it's kind of like that for everyone that's ever worked on one of these. This system really is kind of a mystery. Um, they quit using it. So I, they found a much better system where you could actually access the drive uh, from under the camper, which would have been really helpful, that chain system. It still does use the same Goshen style springs inside of these tubes. The problem is, uh, accessing them is, uh, I don't know yet. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do is completely lift up the, the roof and prop it up and then try to get the posts out, which shouldn't be a problem because they're not actually connected to the roof anymore, which is a problem in and of itself. We'll tackle that later. Um, but I need to get it propped up so that I can pull the posts and get the springs out and hope that I can find the right springs for it. I think you can. Uh, there's a couple of different places uh, but what i ended up doing was for this part was i actually was able to remove the bolt out of this end and pull the entire pipe out through the front uh where the actual crank is i was actually able to pull it all the way out so it's about 11 and a half feet long <laughs> which is a long one but it's good because that way i can kind of start fresh and um, it's just conduit. It's, it's, it's pretty flimsy stuff here, um, which kind of is concerning. So I might try to beef it up a little bit if I can, but anyways, there won't be, there won't be a weak point there at the front. It'll be a full length. Um, and I'll, hopefully that isn't too brittle, um, because that's kind of a problem. If that breaks off, we're in real trouble because it's attached to the sprocket and I don't know if I can get a new one. Um, so it may have to be, if that snaps off, I may have to see if I can get that sprocket out, see if I can get something welded. I, I just don't know. Um, the other problem is that I've called around some shops. I've called around some shops and uh, nobody seems to want to work on pop-ups anymore. There's one guy who's a mobile RV mechanic and he said, call him in two weeks. Um, I don't know what kind of comfort that gives me because um, 
I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm trying to get it fixed on my own so I don't have to call in the reinforcements, but I think I'm on the right track now. Um, it was a little intimidating because I'd never seen this system before and there doesn't seem to be very much information out there, but I, uh, I'm confident that I'm going to tackle this thing and be a pro at it by the end. Um, so we will see. I'm going to go try to get some new conduit and, uh, we will, uh, we will see where it goes from there. So stay tuned. All right. So progress update. So I have been, um, first of all, I went and got some new pipe, uh, from the hardware store and I got it cut to the right length. But before I attach it, I wanted to try to kind of lubricate the stuff up back here. Just see if I can get it a little bit loosened up. I know it's probably not been lubricated because it's hard to get to and, uh, it's a little stiff. So I've been back here with some vice grips, kind of crank it back and forth, uh, lubricating some of the some of the bearings and the sprockets and the, and the spring. And I think I've figured some stuff out here. So I, uh, I started cranking in the upward position and you probably can't see it. Um, and I started getting this side here uh, to lift. The screen is right in the way. You can kind of see it through there. So I started getting this side to lift, but this side was not lifting here. Um, so what I did was I kept cranking and you can kind of see through here, the uh, the spring for this side is is right in there. And I don't know if somebody's been in here before, because this little tab here is definitely lifted up. Um, so I don't know if somebody's been in here trying to work on it or trying to figure it out at one point. I don't know, um, but here's what I figured out. As I kept cranking, eventually this side started to lift, and. Uh, so what happened was, I think, um, it's about, I measured it and it's about, this side has about three and a half inches uh, farther up than this side. So what I'm thinking is, I noticed that hole back there in the floor and this tube, which houses the uh, spring and guides the spring up, is supposed to be mounted into that floor. Well, the floor is all rotted. Um, and so it's loose and it's sinking. And so what I think is, is when that spring is pushing through, it is pushing downward because the force and it's causing it to not lift at the same rate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get under there and I am going to uh, get a new board and brace it up and uh, screw it in there so that it has some support. And uh, we'll see what that does, I think that ought to do the trick. And then I can get the pipe back in here. I got one solid length so that there's not really a weak point. Um, and hopefully that will do the trick. Still TBD, I think I'm gonna have to raise the whole thing up, um, but that should be easy. Uh, that should be easy if I get that floor bra braced, I can raise the whole thing up and then I can um, make sure everything is at the top and then I can get that hole bolted in and in theory that should get me raising and lowering so we shall see <laughs> oh man long hair and a tight space problems i'm not even cleaning it up oh my gosh this thing boy if this doesn't work i don't know i don't know what's next i uh i think fingers crossed prayers up that it's it's ready that was a project. So the three quarter inch pipe that I got, while it looks identical, is just a hair smaller in inside diameter. And so I had to work with that in a tight space and you know, it's just a good time. So here's what we got. Okay, the pole is, is in, bolted in, connected, oiled up everything in there as best I could. That spring's going, got it set so that on first crank, both sides are going up. We, I got it, I got the floor secured over there. It doesn't look like it, but where it matters, it's secured and I'll fill the rest in later. Had to get a little lift going in the corner there because it was still too low, but it's braced underneath and then braced over the top as well. And then I got, I got a two by four tucked in there and screwed in underneath and then I've got the the pipe tubing screwed into that. So we're gonna test it out. Um, we're gonna see, like I said, if this doesn't work, I, I don't know what's next. I'm definitely gonna take a little break. 
we'll see. So front's all back together. I opened all this up to have a little better space to work. Uh, front's in. As I said, I was a little worried about this because if that cog breaks, it's riveted in that that uh, sprocket with the tube, the metal post coming out of it. That's what you had to screw into. Uh, so it was fun. I had to uh, unbolt this from the wall and from the floor to get it to move back so that I could get this this pole onto the post. And then I had to kind of hammer it back into place real delicately like so as to not pop the other side out. And anyways, got her bolted in there. Uh, I'm scared to test it, but moment of truth. Okay, so the good news is it's working. Um, it's going up except the back. Um, it's going up, but not at the same rate. And I think I figured out the problem. So left side is doing better. Not, not as good as the front, still slow. Um, the back, the right, this side is no good. And I think I figured out why um, the, the uh, spring down here, you can kind of see has just completely doubled over. You can see that that's not pretty um, right there. And uh, yeah, it's doubled up in there. That should not be the case. So now the thing is, I don't know if I can get it back out but obviously this spring needs replaced and uh, so I'll have to do that. But first I gotta figure out how to get it out of there without it, because I don't think I can even get it down in this state. <laughs> so we will find out. Um, may have to, uh, may have to just think on this one for a bit before I unbolt anything and risk uh, losing an eye over it. So <laughs> we'll, uh, We'll keep looking at it, but I, th I think we're on the right track. It's just this spring, I think, inevitably was kind of shot. So tube straightened out, um, so that wasn't supposed to happen, but best laid plans, you know? Um, so good news is we got a little more headroom to work with, but uh, bad news is that's not uh, really how I'd like to leave it. So progress continues. All right, so updates. Um, as you can see, the camper's almost all the way up right now. Um, that would be a good thing, except for a few minor issues. Um, first thing being that if you, <laughs> well, here's the thing. We uh, definitely discovered that the chain or the, the spring was not good. Uh, that's pretty gnarly, right? That is not ideal. That was inside here pretty far. <laughs> so it was happening back there, uh, way back into there. So we figured out that inside here is like a basically a giant bicycle chain it starts on that end there's a sprocket runs through the top it's this sprocket down here which is underneath this um and you can see it there it is right there it was off the it was off the chain was off the sprocket so we had to loosen it up finally figured out how to loosen it up got it back on the sprocket um this assembly here seems to be bent you can see it's kind of cockeyed there which is causing some problems um the problem is the floor i don't know how strong really it is and that's that's troubling um we're we're getting the we're, we're trying to crank it all the way up so that we can get the spring to a point where we can take it off from the chain wherever it's connected because i was able to get a new a new spring right here I was able to get a new spring for it, which is great, and a new guide tube, which may or may not need. This guide tube probably could use to be replaced, but also uh, this would need to be cut and bent a little bit, so I don't know about that. I had to rip some of the trim off, but it was kind of rotted anyway, so it's fine. We can deal with that later because it doesn't do any good. Uh, that's not working, but here's the real problem. Uh, we come around to the front, and while we're cranking, we've just got this back corner uh, held up by a 2x4. And uh, everything else is lifting. All three, all three other corners are lifting fine. But the problem we discovered was this: the the assembly here that houses the sprocket and the crank is pushing so hard against this wall, and this wood inside must be rotted. It is literally about to burst through the sidewall. Um, that's cracked already. I did notice it already had a crack and this was splitting a little bit already. So it should have been a warning sign, but up until this point, this hadn't been happening. 
So, uh, it's gotten pretty bad here. Um, not really sure what to do at this point. We think we've, we're close. We're really close to getting that spring out to replace that spring, but now I'm concerned there's bigger issues. And to be honest, I don't know how to get access to the sidewall to replace the wood. And even if I did, uh, well, yeah, needs a lot to, to go. Um, so at this point, gonna have to really brainstorm, think on what to do. But that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, one step forward, two steps back with this. Um, you know, that's uh, just kind of how it goes. So that's the update. We're so close to at least, it, it, we have the appearance of being so close. The walls are, are up, everything's cranking. The front two and that back are working. Um, obviously that spring was in dire need of replacement. I don't know how long it's been that way, but you can see inside here, ceiling looks decent. I don't see any leaking on the inside here. Um, I've got the beds out. I've got the, the tall cabinet out, obviously. Um, got these, this kind of ripped apart here. So um, yeah, I'm not, I'm kind of at a standstill here. I'm not sure what to do, um, but you can see kind of the inside now. So that's good. Uh, even though I have everything kind of torn out, I got the this lift system. Once you get this lift system going, we've got a really nice camper. Um, it's just getting to that point. So that's where we're at. That's uh, today's update.